Okay, my friends, here it is. The video that is going to show you how to grow ginger from store-bought ginger, even if you live in a cold climate. But there are some things that you have to be very aware of because ginger is a very particular plant to grow. But yes, you can grow it. So let us get right into it. I'm going to say some words about it, and then I will take you in the basement and show you the exact procedure for starting up the ginger. Now, first thing that we have to understand is that ginger takes a very long time to grow. So it grows... Uh, shoots upwards and it grows roots downwards and it grows more rhizomes sideways and slightly up like this this is not actually a root it's a rhizome so the plant does not begin more rhizome production meaning more ginger production until four months into its vegetative growth so if we just plant it out after the last frost day and we live in like a northern indiana here zone 5b 6a then we're going to it's going to take all season just to begin rhizome production and we'll be very dismayed come harvest time because this will be my fourth year growing ginger first year i didn't get a harvest because i i did some things wrong second year i adjusted the sales a little bit and so i did i got a small harvest but then last year the third year i got a great harvest because i got the system dialed in so now this year I'm letting you guys know uh, everything that I did right, all right? So we gotta start at any time in February up until about the second week of March is gonna be fine. So next thing is that uh, ginger loves heat. It is a tropical plant. And so the warmest place in the house if you, is the best to start the ginger because we're gonna plant it, as you'll see in a moment, and we're going to induce it to break its dormancy so it begins to sprout. Now, the first, now if you don't have a heat mat, okay, or if you don't have a place that you can regulate that is about between 77 and 87 degrees, then it could take two months to sprout, like it did me the first year. But then once I added the heat mat, then it took about three weeks and it sprouted because, uh, and ginger is one of the few things that I recommend you can use a heat mat without a thermostat because the reason we usually use the thermostat is to keep the heat mat from getting too hot. But you really can't get too hot for ginger for the most part within reason. Uh, so you can just get a cheapo uh, heat mat like this. Maybe I'll put a link in the description and uh, put your tray on top of that. And that is going to really help. Also, you could put it like on top of a radiator or something, maybe depending on how hot it is. Heat mat is your friend, guys. Just go for it, okay? Next thing is that ginger is one of the hungriest plants in your garden, meaning that it loves nutrients. So if you're utilizing the practices from this channel and you've incorporated a base fertilizer of manures, leaf molds, compost, things like that, uh, plant residues, cover crops, if you're practicing those um, soil management practices and you've got the liquid fertilizers like the fish fertilizer especially and uh, you're, you've got thriving microorganisms because of the microbial solutions and the uh, liquid fertilizers, then that's going to be adequate, okay? So just remember, it's one of the hungriest plants. It's like garlic and potatoes, really hungry. Next thing is that, yes, you can grow ginger that you got from the store, but it has to be the organic kind because the non-organic ones can be sprayed with a sprout inhibitor and something that helps them to last longer. So we go to the organic store, get some ginger, and you want the nice plump rock solid ginger you don't want the stuff that is started to get wrinkled and if you squeeze it it kind of gives a little bit that's past its prime so you want the stuff that's nice and plump and solid and then we're going to break it apart and you can see here that we have like one little piece and then one two three eyes here's another piece with one two three eyes and we want each piece to have about three eyes ideally and to be about an inch to be about two inches these are great pieces so we're going to take a knife we're going to cut that right there and then we're going to set it out on the counter for two days until the cut heals you see here and i learned this from trial from experience if you just cut it and immediately plant it it has a high tendency to rot so for that reason we're going to allow it to harden itself uh, the scab over for about two to three days before planting so then we'll be left with pieces like this do you see one two three little eyes uh, one, two, three little eyes like this. These are going to be nice pieces. They've sat out for two to three days. They're healed over. And uh, now we are going to go into the basement. I will show you how to plant this stuff. 
Okay, first thing we're going to do is get the ginger and using a very sharp knife, we're going to cut it into chunks like we discussed previously. Then we're going to allow the chunks to sit for two to three days. It's important that you don't disturb the skin, as little as possible disturb it. And then get the two tray system, so the top one has holes, the bottom one does not. We're going to do bottom watering again with these, just like we do all of our seedlings. And then we're going to add about an inch of soil. They don't need any more than this because they don't actually develop a really robust root system yet at this point in their life. So we're going to put the soil in and then we're going to nestle in each piece of the ginger. And we're just going to give it a couple inches of space on each side. They don't need to be any closer than what you're seeing here. Just enough so that they don't grow together. And then we're going to pre-moisten our soil that we're going to put on top so that if we squeeze a handful of it, then uh, it will uh, run out just a little bit of water. And then we're going to spray some of the soil here because after we uh, water it this time, we're not going to water it again until we visually see it dry out. And then you see how much we're going to put soil all the way to the top. And this is the pre-moistened soil. Now, you make sure that you label it and then place it on the heat mat. You see how much soil is in there? All the way to the top. That's very important. And then we're going to take the probe and we're going to stick the probe into one of the trays so that it knows exactly how hot to keep it. Okay, so from this point, we have to just maintain the environment. So the heat needs to remain about 80 degrees, and we need to maintain the moisture of the soil. Now, we want to err on the side of keeping the soil a bit too dry than too moist. So every few days, or maybe once a week, we'll lift up the top tray, and we'll add about two cups of water to the bottom tray, and then put it back down. And uh, that is going to be adequate. We don't need the soil to be soaking wet from this point out. And here in about, if you, do all the, uh, if you do all of those things, in about two to four weeks, you will see the sprouts. Now, we just let them grow and grow. We do not um, trim them or anything like that. So we keep the light cycle at 16 hours on and eight hours off. That's what we use for all of our indoor plants, 16 and eight, always for starting up seedlings. And uh, then when the time comes, after your last frost date, you will simply lift out each one and it will just have tiny little roots on it by that point. Their root system doesn't do that much yet. So you'll just lift them out and plant them into very rich soil. And ginger likes a bit of afternoon shade. Ginger can grow with more shade than any of the other plants in the garden. So remember that when you're spacing it out. Ginger does not mind some shade, okay, or some dappled light. And then again, you just want to make sure it's nice and well fed because ginger is very hungry. It's a tropical plant, okay? So then you will let it go up until frost. And here's a picture of my ginger last year. Okay, so here we are uh, about one day after our first frost. And you can see that the ginger plants have died back. Now we're just going to gently dig away some of the soil. And you can see the uh, nice fresh pink ginger. Now, the ginger that we grow is going to be baby ginger, and I'll show you what I mean in a minute. So we're just going to take it, and we're going to pull it up. Even though, boom, right there, a bunch of it got broke off into the ground, you get the idea. But see, the ginger that we grow in these climates is not going to be that really massive stuff with the hard, fibrous skin. This is going to be what is considered baby ginger, and it's very soft and tender, perfect for pickled ginger or kimchi or anything that you, where you're going to actually eat the ginger. This is much more tender than regular ginger. So that's pretty much it, my friends. If you feel like you gained something from the video, give it a thumbs up. Share your thoughts in the comments. Also, share the video with anyone else that you think would benefit from growing the ginger.